Yeah, that's Abyss Actor is actually running it back for a top cut finish. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more Oz content. Wow, this is this is actually pretty diverse for a lot more than I'm used to seeing for next play here. Um, their most represented deck this week looks like it was Mathmech. Now, don't get me wrong here. Mathmech has been um, a little bit interesting in terms of development for what we've seen out here. I will say that, you know, the whole Code Talker Firewall stuff getting added into the pull of the deck has just made the deck a more explosive monster. And because of that, you do need to be very, very scared of what the deck can do at the end of the day. We also had Tier Elements over here with three of them showcased in the event. You know? Not surprised about that either. I say it every single video, but OCG loves tier elements. <laughs> the deck is held together by Fairy Tale Snow and Chaos Ruler, and it's literally the only thing keeping it alive. We also have Super Heavy Samurai Toolbox, you know, Earth Box, whatever you can put the scales in to, to build a competent deck. That is what we're seeing here. Vanquish Soul uh, maintains a nice, well rounded option tree here of being the mid range control deck. We have three players step up to the arena here to once again showcase that you need to be aware of what this deck can do it can still do things that's kind of nice we also had double abyss actor um you know i was i was really happy to see that abyss actor has actually done something here because abyss actor was that deck that i'm not going to say people forgot about but it definitely felt like people had forgotten about and i think that you do need to be aware that this deck can kind of do something. Uh, especially, you know, if you don't have to worry about getting zone locked anymore and you can actually play your deck fairly, um, it's kind of good. We only had two purely players, huh? Either people are starting to head away from purely or people are just sick of getting exceed Encore. I don't know, whatever it is, seeing that number down is good. We also had Synchron, or yeah, Synchro Variants. Uh, we had Virtual World, Dragon Maids, Minkanko, um, looks like Magical Musketeers, uh, Rescue Ace, Infernoble. Uh, looks like Asa is represented for Earth. I don't recognize the other one. And we also had Mana Diem over here as well. But I mean, looking at your overall participation chart here, and you always got to factor in for, you know, like the one of the people want to play for fun. But when you have, you know, this many diverse decks, in a format, and I'll continue to say this, like their format has shaped up to be one of the most diverse things that we've seen in a very long time. You know, it's not bad that Tier is still alive in any sort of capacity. I actually think that it's good that players can still play, you know, a deck that they love, you know. Whether or not Chaos Ruler and Friends is degenerate or not, I mean, really leaves a chance to be seen here, but all right, now your top eight cut for this event. Ha! Huh. Hey, Double Math Mac. Well, our conversion rate was 50% from participation to here. I think that's pretty good, actually. Um, you know, Math Mac still revealing circular to OTK. Your opponent is one of the stupidest things that you can actually still do in the game. Uh, we also had Minkanko over here. To be honest with you, I didn't think that we would see Minkanko actually do well. I actually wish the next play would post actual top eight for these events. For whatever reason, they love just posting top four. So we're not going to actually get to see some of the cooler stuff here. Uh, Mana Diem had one representative in top cut, which I think is good. Um, seeing that that deck can actually do its thing in terms of, you know, rogue busting is good. We also had Dragon Maid over here doing its thing as well. Well, hi, Dragon Maid. You know, Dragon Maid didn't make top four, but I do think that the deck still being a semi-strong competitor is actually kind of showing. Uh, I think this is the first Dragon Maid deck that I've seen on a run back in, oh my gosh, quite some time. We also had one Abyss actor make it into top cut, and they did make top four, so we'll take a look at that list here in a second, which is actually kind of amazing. You know, the, the rogue competitor out here actually stepping up to do something is very nice. Super Heavy Samurai on the run back, I mean, like, what do you want me to say about Super Heavy Samurai? Like, all the deck needs to do is grind out its opponent, and it... it it's game over. Wakashi and Friends is amazing. And it it's it just showcases like how 
poorly designed those cards were. And then, of course, we have Purely running it back as well. You know, I, I definitely continue to expect Purely to have a pretty decent conversion rate because the deck is usually that strong. Overall, top eight looks beautiful. I mean, other than, you know, Math Mech being <laughs> Math Mech, but... I mean, it's pretty nice. Let's pass on over to top four. It's no stranger to see that we're doing OTK shenanigans with Super Heavy Samurai. You know, the fact that this deck has a built-in FTK where you can just drop down, ping your opponent for, you know, 8,000 is pretty crazy. You can thank Electromite for allowing that to happen. And I think that eventually the OCG is going to clean this up because the DDD monster being able to be scaled up and then be able to be abused in the way that the OCG has been doing it has been actually pretty crazy. Um, overall, I mean, the rest of the utility for the deck, the Archery and Decentrix, the Stand the Claws, a lot of the stuff that you're very used to seeing here in terms of, you know, the development for the deck is pretty standard. And you're going to continue to see that consistency built across the board here for this deck because there's not really much of a reason to change it at this stage. So Super Heavy Samurai, for what it's doing, is very consistent. It is a absolute monster, and you will continue to see it grind. Next up is our Math Mech deck. Yay! Sakitama Aratama, baby! Oh, man, you know, I say this a lot, too, but when you see those spirit monsters be free extenders for this deck and not interfere any way because oh, I get locked into cybers. Well, luckily for you, my spirit monsters are additional normal summons. Literally, Aratama into Sakitama, you know, plus circular, is just three level fours on the field, so now you get to go ahead and make whichever combo line that you actually want to go down. Uh, that extra level of consistency kind of broke this deck in a way. I also see that this deck is, in fact, playing Red Reboot. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's going to be a real fun time. Uh, we're also playing Trap Eater down here in the side deck. And I see that we are citing the additional access code talker. So if we get into like an OTK game scenario here, where we do need that little bit more of an oomph, you know, to kind of get the game going in our favor, we do have access to it. Next up here is Mana Diem. So, Revolution Synchron just added so much to this deck. Uh, the fact that you, you can expedite the process to make... Uh, ancient fairy dragon and then go ahead and revive it as a level one is just insane to me um the ultimaya bishi bulkin that you can actually make in here is actually incredible also you know crimson dragon with the hot red dragon uh calamity the in the entire toolbox option has just extended out so much and it, it did take a little bit of time for the ocg to kind of figure out how they wanted to approach a mana diem and i think that once you kind of get the deck down and how you want to build things in terms of the easiest outs and so forth you will have good results like this to kind of showcase everything. So very, very strong competitor out here. Uh, I think a lot more people have kind of forgotten how strong this deck was. And then there is Abyss Actor. Now, everything that I know about this deck is kind of interesting. Now, the first thing that you're going to see here that's going to kind of cut you off a little bit is, yes, we are playing the a mini Unchained package in this deck. Now, the new Unchained Link Monster, I do believe, states two Fiend Monsters to make. So you're already going to have some in-house synergy for this package that you'll just be able to access. I don't think a lot of people, when you, especially when you go into a tournament like this, Abyss Actor is not something that is on your agenda for things that you really need to worry about competing against. So if something like Abyss Actor comes up and goes, hey, you know, we can play a mini Unchained package in this deck, and then we can play, you know, how many hand traps? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17. We have 17 hand traps in the main deck with 23 other engine pieces. Um, I can guarantee you that hand traps were the thing that allowed this deck to do its thing, but you also got to keep in mind that one card engines, you know, the fact that you can turn any Abyss Actor into the Link one and then kind of go on about your day um, is pretty strong at the end of the day. So it does kind of show how good hand traps are when they can glue an entire deck together and then you can look at your opponent and go, well, you know, like there's not really much you can do. Like I just happen to open up extremely bad better than you at the end of the day. So good stuff. So what do you guys think about the wrap up for next play this week? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And 
Abyss Actor. That's actually really, really cool. See beautiful faces back here later, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.